Hi everyone, Alex Tardy here, National Weather Service, with an update for you. Tropical Cyclone Hillary. Uh, here's some latest satellite imagery taken Friday early afternoon, and it still shows a major hurricane, in fact, a Category 4 hurricane. Aircraft flew over it earlier today and measured right at 130 mile per hour wind speed near the center of it and you can see the center of it on the left hand side and on the right hand side major hurricane hillary and now it's a waiting game watching it move northward this is what you need to know um, tropical storm watch is in effect we don't have records of a tropical storm watch being issued for southern california tropical storm means that wind speeds are expected to be 40 miles per hour with the eye or the core of the system when it makes landfall somewhere near San Diego or in San Diego County. So that's really important distinction. If we were expecting a hurricane to make landfall, it would be a hurricane watch. So we also have a flood watch in effect, and that's for all areas for flooding. Rainfall has trended a little bit heavier especially the rainfall rates, they're listed here. The most concern is the desert areas where several inches of rain will occur, especially Sunday and Sunday night. But we also think there'll be some heavy rain showers, though not widespread, on Saturday. So be prepared for that in the mountains and deserts. So if you live on the coast, even coastal areas should get one to three inches of rain from tropical cyclone Hillary. This is the key message that's issued by the National Hurricane Center. I want your eyes to focus on the extreme risk of potential flooding on Sunday because of the track of the system and the fact that the storm is heavily loaded in the front with a lot of moisture and energy that's going to be moving right up the California Baja into San Diego County. So we think rain is the major threat with this scenario but it will be windy too, and that can cause significant damages to trees and even power lines. It stands out on a weather satellite. I'm looking at the tropics with this view. There's San Diego, it's got a ways to go. Keep in mind, Hillary will be accelerating, moving faster as it gets closer to the Baja on Saturday. The moisture is abundant. You don't typically see this kind of moisture, especially pooled up in one area. That's coming our way. This is a measure of the water vapor or the amount of moisture in the entire atmosphere. So even today with sunny skies, there's moisture in the air and it shows it right there, about an inch. We're expected to double or even more that amount of moisture. So it's gonna be muggy and warm, that type of rainfall. There's the latest path, the cone we call it. You don't always wanna focus on the center, but that cone is the error, the potential error in previous forecasts or in the current forecast. And it's a rather small cone, even when it gets to San Diego. Sure, the center might jog to the right and go over El Centro. It might jog to the left and go over Catalina Island, but it's coming right towards Southern California. The latest intensity shown on this, this is updated every three hours with significant updates every six hours. 130 mile per hour sustained winds. Uh, it's only moving 12 miles per hour now, but like I said, it's going to accelerate. We look for landfall late Sunday. So sometime Sunday evening in the United States. The probability for tropical storm force winds 40 miles per hour or greater. Well, that's shown here, and that's why uh, there is a tropical storm watch in effect. You can see that probability is highest right along the San Diego and Orange County coastline. Maximum wind speeds and their gusts. So that's a difference here. These are wind speed gusts. Areas in our deserts and mountains could see wind speeds 80 plus miles per hour. Now for most where we live, we're talking 50, 60 mile per hour winds that will down power lines, that can down trees, that will move any loose objects that are not secure, that type of wind. And keep in mind, it'll be raining a lot of that duration. The latest rainfall forecast is shown here. It hasn't changed a whole lot. It's gone up a little bit. 
Desert areas, a sweeping three to six inches of rain. Locally, 10 inches of rain in our mountain areas. And even our coast and valley, uh, two to over two inches of rain. Uh, Inland Empire, some locations could see three or four inches of rain. The heaviest rain, of course, expected on Sunday. Here's the total rain forecast um, in a little cleaner format. Take a look at your area. Again, most of this rain is going to occur on Sunday. Of course, rain will be developing the deserts on Saturday, so don't be surprised about that. It'll be moving from the east to the west up towards our mountains. Majority of this rain will really pile up when we get into Sunday and, of course, Sunday night as tropical cyclone Hillary makes landfall. We also expect a pretty big swell coming up from the south. So there's going to be big waves, dangerous waves, uh, a longshore current, and a lot of uh, wash machine type activity with the water, but a big south swell coming up into the California Bight as shown here. Expect that mostly uh, late Sunday into early Monday. Some of the marine highlights, the biggest surf, the biggest waves onto our beaches will be in Orange County. High tide will be important, especially for coastal flooding. So if you live on the coast um, and there's heavy rain falling with runoff and you also have a slight storm surge coming in, and then on top of that, you have the big swell and waves piling up on the beaches that can all contribute to coastal flooding, especially when timed with high tide. Here's some of the ocean impacts. Take a look at these if you live uh, on the beach or you're affected by the ocean, keep in mind a tropical storm watch is in effect. So tropical storm level winds are possible in our near shore waters. The land impacts are listed here. Land impacts will be heavily on the rainfall amount and the duration on Sunday and Sunday night. So that's gonna be a lot of volume of water for our deserts, mountains, and even some of our valley coastal areas. It's gonna be dangerous travel, especially Sunday evening through Monday morning. Some roads may get washed out, a lot of mud and debris on roads. And keep in mind, trees could get toppled by those strong tropical storm level winds while it's raining. Excessive rainfall map is shown here. On Saturday, I mentioned that showers are going to be starting on Saturday and they may be heavy on Saturday and Saturday evening with some local flooding in the desert areas. So don't be surprised if heavy rain cells form in our deserts and start moving towards our mountain on Saturday. Sunday, all bets are off. I have not seen um, a map with this much purple level meaning all that area is susceptible to excessive, too much rain. It's not just burn scars, it's not just flood prone areas, but there could be some unusual flooding as well, Sunday and Sunday night. The purple shaded is the highest threat area, the extreme threat area for rainfall. The water temperatures, uh, how are they doing? Well, where it is now, they're well in the 80s. And so the hurricane is rich with lots of warm energy coming off the ocean. When it gets to about where that arrow is, it'll start encountering water that is 80 or below. And um, that will be a large factor in decreasing the strength, but also the storm accelerating will cause it to weaken. The anomaly shows that the water is not colder than it normally is, but warmer than it is, at least for the southern part of the Baja. When it, you go up to the coast of San Diego and northern Baja, Water temperatures in the 70s, low 70s, about where it should be this time of year. Historical tracks are shown here. Remember, Nora, 1997, made landfall in the Imperial Valley, and it was recorded as having tropical storm force winds, but none of these other storms were. There's the track of Nora from 1997, went to the east of San Diego, through the Imperial Valley into the Colorado River Valley. Here's some climatology for reference um, of prior storms that uh, were weaker, but still impacted uh, near, near landfall in Southern California. Of course, the 1939 storm was the one that had the direct hit 
as a tropical storm on Long Beach. We're not used to getting rain in San Diego or Palm Springs in August, and we're predicting about a year's worth of rain potential for some of our desert areas. So a really significant type of storm in the works. Some of the key takeaways are here. The flood watch is in effect for all areas. All areas could see just too much rain at once and too much rain total. Tropical storm force winds. That's why there's a tropical storm watch in effect for our region of Southern California. There's some uncertainty, um, but this looks like a high impact event. Uh, the exact track, potentially we could see an isolated tornado anywhere in our deserts. We could see uh, a water spout. There's potential for other things to happen within the cyclone center as it arrives. Make sure you tune into weather.gov for the latest information. I wanted to show you a larger picture of the water temperatures and anomaly, and you can see the source region where Hurricane Hillary is right now is, like I showed earlier, warmer than average north of the El Nino zone. The weather pattern that's driving it to us, unlike what we've seen in other storms in prior years or even this year, a massive ridge, a massive dome of hot air in the central United States. That flow around that is literally allowing the door to be open and the path for this storm to move up from the south directly towards us. So it's a little bit lucky that this pattern or unlucky because of the potential impact with this storm. This big dome is unusual as well. 